questions. All right, sure. So what would be the most impactful use of our time today? What would be most meaningful for your LSAT prep? So I can't, I feel like I'm at a standstill with like logical reasoning and reading comp. Like log, logic games is my best section. And I think like the most I ever get wrong usually is like five, which is like rare. Like usually I'll get only like one to two wrong. And then when I do the logical reasoning and reading comp, I'll, I just keep getting answers wrong that I, that I realize why, but then I'll get something different wrong on the next. Like it's not, it's, it's not something that's constant with each test, like a, a specific question type or something like that. How many sections so or I, exams would you say you've done at this point? I've done, I can tell you the exact ones I've done. I just have to look because I was using a different company first. That's fine. No, I mean, just ballpark. Like, have you done 20 exams? Have you done no, I've exams? Probably, no, I've have probably done, done like that. maybe like 10, 10. Okay. Probably. So my biggest recommendation first off would be do more exams. Mm -hmm. It takes a while to start to see the patterns yeah. and to start to reap the benefits of what you're doing. Because if you do five exams and you learn those questions that you got wrong, those exact methods of reasoning might not repeat on your next five. But over time, the number of patterns that you've been exposed to and understand will start to require that they repeat themselves. Yeah. And then you will start to make improvements. So I was averaging like 158s to 162s. So I wanted to get in the 160s for the September test. I don't really know what happened. I did not get that. But so I'm hoping to get a 165 or better on the next one. So I read how your best strategy is like to do an everyday plan exactly. So I was hoping we could like make one of those together. Yeah, sure. So your target date is what, November? November, yeah, November. Okay, so you've got about a month between now and then. And would you say that there are certain weak areas you've identified? Mm, like, no, honestly. Do you feel like you're still lacking kind of in, in all areas except maybe games? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I guess I would say that. But do you have a proficiency in the different types of logical reasoning questions? Um... It varies, but like for some weird reason, I get the easier ones wrong, like the main point questions or like strengthening questions, which I, in the beginning was doing so well. And then I think I just didn't focus enough on them. And then now they're like lagging behind. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not exactly positive, honestly. Okay. So you might want to do a couple of exams over the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. just to see if there is a particular trend. Take note of that. Okay, so how many exams do you think I should be doing a week? Well, what are your other obligations right now? Like, um, I work, go to, school? Yeah, school. But like, okay. obviously, well, uh, they're both important, but th I have plenty of time to like do towards the LSAT. So okay. I don't, like, school work is fine. Sure. All right, then in that case, I would suggest you do at most two full-length, five-section timed exams per week between now and test day. Okay. No more than that because you can't really afford to do more given schoolwork and more than that might not be useful anyway. But two mm -hmm. per week spaced out, not on consecutive days, and then detailed review of those exams. Okay. And make those the most recent exams, ideally those from the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm but also save a handful of those new exams to do for a potential retake. So you might do even numbered ones now and then save the odd numbered ones if you were hypothetically going to potentially retake in the future. But over the next couple of weeks, note if there are any particular weak areas that jump out, like certain logical reasoning question types. And if there are, you might do some drilling on those types or read some foundational material on those types. So should I be doing your lessons that are in that two-month plan? Or I should only be doing the ones that I think I'm, that I'm lagging behind it? I would say at this point, if you're only a month out, do only the lessons that you're lagging behind. And you don't need to do everything, especially since you're not starting from scratch. Okay. But if you need a so refresher on inference questions or weekend questions, do the relevant lessons on those. And then definitely do the masterclass videos because that is the more advanced material where I'm actually doing things like critiquing student written explanations to help you improve your review process. Okay. And so when I'm not doing 
tests, I should still be doing like three times section a, a day, right? But like separate them. Like I don't have to do them all in a row. That's a great question. So let's say hypothetically you're doing your full length exams on Monday and then on Thursday, mm -hmm. hypothetically. You could then spend Tuesday reviewing. Wednesday, you might drill some weak areas. You might do two individual sections back to back. Thursday, another full length exam. Friday, review of that exam. Saturday, drill week areas. Maybe Sunday, you take the day off or work on schoolwork, something like that. So yes, short answer is on your off days, you could do two time sections or three time sections back to back. But the question is why? What are you hoping to get out of it? Go into it with a plan that you want to work on pacing or you want to work on endurance or you want to maybe try out a new strategy. Okay. And do you think that because the logic games on the September tests were like more like games from the past, like they were definitely a lot harder than the ones that I've been recently doing. Do you think that that's going to be like a new trend? Yeah, curveball games like that have been a trend for a while, actually. The September games, everyone's talking about them because they're recent and they were rather difficult, but there have been lots of recent difficult games over the past five, 10 years even. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that you do a ton of weird games just to expose yourself to those. And the old games are good. There are some newer ones as well. And if you email me, I'll send you a list of tough games from every exam ever released, from exam number one up to present. So you can drill those. Okay, I'm just writing that down. But we don't know. Is, is November going to have hard games, easier games, harder reading comp? Impossible to say. LSAC loves to throw curveballs. They love to trip up students who are blindly following some pre-prescribed approach. And so I would say be ready for anything. Be ready for tough games or tough reading comp or tough LR. And also be ready to potentially do two reading comps back to back or two games back to back or even three LRs back to back. Mm -hmm. Whatever your worst nightmare is, prepare for that. I had two games and I was really happy because the experimental section was so easy. So I thought that was going to be the, the game, but it was obviously not. It was the other one. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that's just the way it plays out. But if you do all those old games, you'll be ready for whatever they throw your way. Okay. So right now I should just focus on so I need to look out for weak areas. So how on this other website that I, cause I'm still logged into it, I have all the tests on there and it like divides them into certain categories. So I guess I'll, if those keep repeating, then I'll, those are the ones that I'll go back and recover, I guess. Yeah. So if you don't have a disproportionate issue with strengthening questions or flaw questions or sufficient assumption, then you could drill those to do them more and then also review techniques on how to handle those particular question types. But at a certain point, it may not be about question types anymore because once you know strengthen, you know strengthen. At that mm -hmm. point, you might just be getting difficult questions wrong because they're difficult. And that's where detailed review comes in and that's what the masterclass videos cover. Okay, so, sounds good. I feel better. Awesome. After the September test, I took like a two week break of like doing nothing. That is totally fine. Sometimes you need just a little bit of time to rest and recuperate. And there was enough of a gap there that I think you could certainly afford that. Plus, you have all the studying you've done up to that point. Okay, sounds good. Awesome, Julia. What would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? I think I need to, instead of rushing to do more exams, I need to really focus on what I got wrong and why, rather than just trying to do as many questions as I can, because I think that's what I've been doing. Fantastic. Yeah, so just go out and do that write out your own explanations as part of your review process and feel free to send them over to me. I'm happy to give them a look. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them and feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.